I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, in our last session, we looked at Daniel chapter 3, the Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego being thrown into the fire, and God de delivered them. And uh, a fourth man appeared as a response to the king's question, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? And today we're going to look at Daniel chapter 4. I would like us to look at the sequence. In chapter 1, they are taken from Babylon, from Jerusalem to Babylon. And in chapter 2, from the king himself had a dream from mystery to revelation. And at the end of chapter 2, he praises the God of heaven. He says, there's no God like the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. At the end of chapter 3, he repeats the same. After he had erected his image and defying the God that he praised in chapter 2. In chapter 3, he erects an image. He is against now the God that he said he is the, there's no God like him. And now he praises his God, Maduk, the God of wisdom, the, the God of the Babylonians. And in chapter 3, he, 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 he's doing exactly that. Now, let's see in chapter 4 what happens. Very much interesting in chapter 4, from pride to humility. Because now God has been working with this gentleman, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now he's supposed to be worshipping God. And he is not worshipping God. So now God will take his pride out of him and made him to reason as a beast. God indicating to him that everything is in God's hand. If you despise God, God is able to, to debase you, to make you uh, become lower than the animals and go eat grass with animals for you don't want to use the brain that God gave you. So now let's let's look firstly at the structure of chapter four. The structure of chapter four, it, it begins with chapter four, verse one to three, the king's pride. That is the pride of Nebuchadnezzar. Then secondly, verse four to 18, we'll be looking at the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Uh, number three, the interpretation of that dream and, and number four, the fulfillment of the dream. That is verses four, chapter four, verses 28 to 33. Then the, uh, the fifth one is king's praise, when the king is now praising God. We are now going to what I call the final chapter for Nebuchadnezzar's life. And he, he either makes it or breaks it. He either worship God or he remained destroyed eternally. You know, God will give you a chance up until the end of it all, up until you destroy yourself. So we pick up here. There will be a good example comparing chapter 4 and chapter 5. In our next presentation, we'll be looking at chapter 5 because chapter 4, the king that humbled himself at the end and God saves the king. And in chapter 5, the king that is so arrogant that he ended up being destroyed because he despised God. He took the vessels that belongs to God and he did as he pleases. So let us go through chapter 4, a titled From Pride to Humility. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, by now, we expect him to be a man that respects God, to be a man that is now worshipping God. But let's see what he, he does. Chapter 4, I'm reading the first three verses. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought towards me. Verse 3, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Other says the book of uh, chapter 4 of the book of Daniel, it's written rather in a very strange way. It begins with the end. It begins with him praising God. When he's doing that at the end of it, you will see at the body of the, the chapter that tells us of his pride. Then after that, God brought him low. Then he started now praising God. Let's go to verse 4 and look at the dream that this king had. Verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest 
in my house, flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. So you can call Nebuchadnezzar a dreamer. Remember in chapter 2, he had a dream that the astrologers, the soothsayers, the Chaldeans, and the magicians, they failed to tell the king the dream. And they said there's no man on earth who can tell the king's dreams except the gods who dwell not in the flesh of men. So now they said to the king, tell us the dream. We will come with the interpretation. So had the king told them the dream, would they be able to interpret it? That is the question. That's the question King Nebuchadnezzar probably heard. Because now in this dream in chapter 4, he is not calling Daniel, whom he knows will exactly interpret the dream. But what he does is he calls the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers. Question why? Remember what they said in chapter 2. Tell us the dream and we will come with the interpretation. So the king now is willing to tell them the dream. He's waiting for the interpretation. Let's see what's happened. We are in verse 4 of chapter 4 going through to verse 18. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was addressed in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Verse 6, therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Other people have a problem with this verse. They say the king knew in chapter 2 that his, his wise men, they were nowhere to be found. Why didn't he straight go call Daniel? But remember, they said, king, tell us the dream will come with the interpretation. So this time he's saying, okay, I'm going to tell them the dream. Let them come with the interpretation. Verse 8, but at the last Daniel, verse 7, then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Verse 8, but at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and before whom I told the dream, saying, he called his wise men. He told them the dream. I, I'm imagining this. When he called them now, he said to them, gentlemen, I'm upgrading you now. Remember in chapter 2, you said I must tell you the dream. You will come with the interpretation. Now I have the dream. Here is the dream. Give the interpretation. Imagine with me, the soothsayers looking at the magicians. The magicians looking at the astrologers, the astrologers looking at the Chaldeans, saying, guys, this is, this is your expertise. They are now arguing. No one knows the answer to the question of the king. No one can interpret until the king calls Daniel, and he is now telling the dream to Daniel. Let us look at the content of the dream. Verse 9, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubled thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Verse 10, thus were the vision of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto heaven and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruits thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the path thereof, and all flesh was fed on it. So now Nebuchadnezzar is telling the dream to Daniel. He saw this huge tree in the middle of the earth, and it grew up to heaven, and its side spread all over the earth. This 13, I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. The king is now explaining the dream. Huge tree. 
it spread all over the earth. It had much fruits. The fowls of the air were on its branches. The leaves were fair. The fruits were many. The beasts of the earth were fed under it. And everyone on earth was fed by this tree. Until the king saw a watcher. What is a watcher? A watcher is a herald. What is a herald? A herald is a messenger. What is a messenger? A messenger is an angel that God is using to communicate or to connect heaven and earth. So this man in his dream, King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the watcher coming from heaven and with a loud voice saying, hew down the tree or cut down the tree. Wow. Why is the tree being cut down? And how long will it be cut down? Will it be destroyed until it is thrown into the fire? This tree. And also, what does this tree stand for? Or what does it represent? Let's go to verse 14. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Verse 15. Nevertheless, Leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Verse 16, let his heart be changed from men's, and let a beast heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. Wow, it's changing now. From the tree that we should be using the word eat, eat. But it says him giving a heart. So this tree might be representing a man. Question, which man? What has this man done? Why is he being cut, cut, cut off? And what does that mean? Will the man die? Will he be buried? Will something happen to this man? Let's continue reading. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. Until this person knows that God ruleth in the kingdom of men. So whichever kingdom that you may see, ruling maybe the way you don't like, but one thing for sure, God is in charge, God is in control. No matter how evil the king may be, but one thing for sure, God is in charge. And that kingdom, that president, that leader is accountable to God. Verse 19, then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Daniel is saying, I wish the dream was for your enemies and its interpretation to those who hate you. Because really, this is not the good news, O king. And remember, it says he became silent, or he became quiet, or he was astonished, or he was surprised for about an hour. And the king said, no, let not the dream or its interpretation troubles you. And then he starts speaking and said, I wish it were for your enemies and its interpretation for those who hate you. Verse 20, the tree that thou sowest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was made for all. Under the which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of heaven had their habitation. It is thou. O king. Now, he's coming to the interpretation now. The tree that you saw, it's you, O king. So when the watcher says, 
cut down the tree. It means they will cut down Nebuchadnezzar. Cutting down to where? Is he going to die? Is he going to be demoted? Is he going to be replaced? What does that mean? Cut down the tree. Let's continue. Verse 22. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become stronger, for thy greatness is grown and reached unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the fields, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the fields, till seven times pass over. So now the, the, the prophet is interpreting the dream to the king. Thou art this tree, O king. As it was said, cut down the tree. It means you, king, will be removed from men. Verse 24, this is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. This judgment to this king, it comes with hope engulfed in it. You will be removed from men and be made to eat grass as oxen. Till, the word till, it means there's for a certain period, until you acknowledge that God ruleth in the kingdom of men. So your punishment, you can shorten it by quickly repenting. Or you can remain for as long as you are arrogant, as long as your pride is with you. Up until you understand when the wise men said, pride goeth before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. So you are now, as this huge tree, you are looking at your downfall now because God showed himself to you in chapter 2. You said there's no God like that. In chapter 3, you erect your own image. You want people to worship your image, not the God that you acknowledge. In chapter 3, at the end of it, you said there's no God like this, but still you don't show signs of fruits that shows repentance. Let's continue. We are now in verse 28. All this came upon the king, upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace. He walked in the palace and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Wow. His pride is now kicking in now. One day as he walks and he looks at his palace, friends, I'm told that the palace was so beautiful. It had hanging gardens. It was so beautiful. And when he walked around one day, he's forgotten. Pride kicks in. He says, is this not Babylon that I with my might or with my power have built? Instead of worshiping God, instead of praising God who gives the brain to do whatsoever, instead of praising him who, who has given him wisdom, he praises himself. Remember Daniel when he appeared before him in chapter 2. Are you able? He said there's a God in heaven. He, he put a disclaimer clause that it is not me, but it is God. But now Nebuchadnezzar, instead of praising God, he is doing a, what we call a self-praise. He's exalting himself. Is this not my might? Is this not my power? Is this not my brain? Am I talking to someone? Is it not my intelligence 
that I, I got this degree? Is it, is, it, is it not because of my wisdom that I did A, B, C, and D? Is it not because when is God getting praised because of what you do? Jesus said, do good that pe the people who see may praise your father who is in heaven. Let us do good for the benefit of the name of him who created us, not ourselves. That is pride that will lead us to a terrible downfall. Verse 33, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bed's claws. Picture this man now. He is going outside of his palace. He looks at this beautiful garden. Didn't my might make all of this? The Bible says while the words were still in his mouth, a watcher was yet cut down the tree, cut down the tree, and he was taken and he was made to eat grass like oxen, meaning he, the, his power of reason was removed and he became like a beast. And the Bible says his hair were like feathers of eagles and his, his nails were like claws of animals. And he is now losing it, eating grass. He is now an animal. The King James Version says till seven times. Is that seven days? Seven months? Seven years? Yes, the latter is correct. For seven years, he ate grass with beasts and his son was the one now acting as the king in the palace while he's eating grass and he's eating grass. But let's continue because remember what, what, what he saw on the dream, cut down the tree and leave the stump with the brass on, on it, with the band of brass on it and silver till it is wet with the Jew, until he knows that God ruled in the kingdom of men. And thereafter, she was restored. Let, let's continue and see. Uh, verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, he is no longer that king full of pride. Now he says, and I lifted mine eyes and look up to heaven. What does that mean? It means now he tried everything as a beast. He tried everything. Maybe some people tried to get him medical doctors to restore his sanity, until he realized that his help cometh nowhere else up until he takes his eyes and look up onto that mountain, the mountain of God, and God restored him, and he is now praising God. Verse 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Wow, verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praises and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk it in pride, he is able to abase them. The king is now in his senses. He comes back restored to his position. He says now majesty was added to him. The glory of his kingdom expanded now why? Because now he acknowledges the God of heaven. He acknowledges that God put whosoever he likes in the kingdom, that God ruled in the kingdom of men. As we close, 2 Timothy 
chapter 2. I'm reading in your hearing verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the weight of truth. So we need to study this book of Daniel and be approved of God and dividing the word of God rightly because we've studied his word prayerfully and we understood the word of God and that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall from pride to humility. May the good Lord bless us as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For your word is sharper than the two-edged sword. Your word guides us, Lord. Lead us till the day thou comest with the clouds of heaven. In Jesus we pray. Amen.